you know, what we're doing in artificial intelligence is gradually trying to generalize the capabilities of the algorithms um, so that they apply in more cases with less human intervention, right? So, uh, and this is one of the problems actually with, with deep learning technology is that um, it's a tabula rasa technology, meaning you can't really put prior knowledge into it in a machine readable form. Um, and so, to a first approximation, it doesn't work. And how does a data scientist get it to work? Well, the data scientist thinks about the problem and then tries to figure out what implications that has for the only thing they can do, which is to modify the architecture of the network. So they can make it, they can change the convolutional structure of weight sharing, they can uh, try different uh, activation functions, they can try different um, you know, receptive field sizes, uh, they can put the layers together in different orders, um, but that's a very limited way of expressing what you know about the problem. Um, and it means that it's not really, uh, as you say, it's not really a fully automated technology uh, in the sense that human ingenuity is required in order for it to be successful. Um, but, you know, I think we are gradually learning how to make it more general. Uh, you know, I was reading a paper that came out last week um, <clears throat> from DeepMind, where they showed that the, the AlphaGo system, um, which people has assumed was actually a Go playing program, um, could also, within the space of two hours, uh, defeat the world's best chess program and the world's best shogi program. Um, and so that shows that it has some generality. It's still limited to you know, two-player, deterministic, turn-taking, discrete, blah, blah, blah games. Uh, so it's not, you know, it's not threatening to take over the world uh, anytime soon. But um, that's how progress happens in AI. It's not by... Uh, people shoehorning a piece of technology into another application by a lot of human ingenuity. It's by understanding how to make the technology more general so that you don't have to do the human ingenuity, right? That uh, it's actually the machine's ingenuity, the machine acquiring knowledge and being able to use it um, for faster learning or better problem solving or, or whatever. Mm. General purpose AI is probably going to happen. Um, the Terminator idea I want to separate into two things. Uh, one is the use of autonomous weapons, and the other is machines taking over the world. Um, so the use of autonomous weapons is a very real and imminent problem. Uh, the technology to build autonomous weapons that could have a catastrophic impact on humanity is already there. This is not science fiction. Um, no new technological breakthroughs are required. It's an engineering problem of integrating what we already know how, how to do. It's similar to the self-driving car problem, except it's easier. Uh, you know, and no one thinks of the self-driving car as a myth. Uh, it's something that is sort of on the way uh, through uh, hard engineering work that people are already doing. Um, and people are already doing this uh, in the weapons business. So, um, and the reason why it's, it's catastrophic is that if a weapon is autonomous, um, then you don't have to supervise it, uh, which means that you can launch as many as you want with as few people as you, as you need, right? Um, and so if you can, you know, if, if 10 people can launch 50 million weapons, then that's a weapon of mass destruction that could be far more uh, devastating than uh, you know, a large nuclear weapon um, and far more effective and selective uh, in who you target uh, and what damage you do. So, um, so why the major powers think it's a good idea to create that technology, I do not know. Uh, okay, so that's the autonomous weapon side and there's the machines taking over the world side. Um, so if we think that there's a pretty high probability that we will achieve 
uh, general purpose AI capabilities, which, which means roughly um, systems that, like humans, can learn to solve pretty much any significant problem that comes up in the real world. Um, you know, our physical world, you know, uh, we have managed to um, master it to a great extent. Uh, not completely, but um, with our intellect, we sort of control our physical environment and uh, our social environment. So if machines can do that, um, then they can have impact on a global scale just as humans have had an impact on a global scale. So the question is, how do you make sure that that impact is beneficial to humans? Um, and the, the scenarios that, that worry people, right, when you, when you look into it, it's not the Terminator scenario of sort of robot armies deciding that they hate humans and killing them all. Uh, or sort of spontaneously becoming conscious, which, you know, this is the Hollywood storyline, uh, you know, because it's, it's sort of boring to have an enemy that isn't even conscious and doesn't hate you, right? That's, you know, an enemy that's some inanimate object. Um, but that's what it's actually going to be. Um, and the, the real storyline for, for how things fail is that, um, we build uh, very intelligent systems, and we fail to understand the, how to give them the appropriate objective structures, right? The, what it is they're supposed to be doing. Um, and you can think of all kinds of simple failures. You know, you say, um, you know, develop a, a cure for cancer as quickly as possible, because you know, people are dying every three or four seconds from cancer, so we need to do something. Um, well, if you want to develop a cure for cancer as quickly as possible, um, the best way to do that is, first of all, to induce tumors in, in the entire human population and then try millions of different cures on them. Right? Unfortunately, that will leave most of the human population dead, but you forgot to mention that part. Right? Um, you know, so when, when you give a human a goal, they're operating with a, a, a pre-existing understanding of the entire objective structure, the preferences, or, or that they have and everyone else has, um, which obviously include not dying and, and various other things. But you know, it, it, it's sort of worrying that none of the self-driving cars we have right now or that are currently you know, on the drawing board um, know that people don't want to be dead. You, know, you would think this would be a useful thing for them to know. Uh, now, it's kind of, you know, arguably, it's sort of built into the way the algorithms work. You know, it's, it's sort of implicit, uh, and it was obviously there in the designer's mind that we shouldn't mow people down on the road. Um, but uh, it's really important in the long run as you start to build more general systems that um, they understand the, you know, what humans want the world to be like. Uh, and they understand all of it, because if you leave stuff out, uh, like people, you know, people like to have their legs, uh, then you might find solutions coming up that, you know, that are optimal solutions for the objectives that we've given to the machines, but actually have terrible consequences for the f stuff we forgot to mention that we care about.